Apple has just released iOS 16.0.3 to the general public to fix up some very widespread bugs that have been affecting the new iPhone 14 owners along with every other device running iOS 16. And new Apple Watch owners also got watchOS 9.0.2 today alongside the iOS release. And we will briefly discuss what's new in watchOS later in this video as well, but we're mostly going to be talking about iOS 16.0.3. So let's first talk about the size of this update. So you can see it came in at 1.21 gigabytes on my iPhone 14 Plus. That was coming from 16.0.2, but that size of course will vary depending on your device and the version you're coming from. And before we discuss everything new in the software, let's check out the build number. So if we go to our settings, general, about, we can see that the new build number is 20A392. And if we scroll down to the modem firmware, we can see that has also been updated. So it's now 1.00.08. So a minor update to the modem firmware and keep in mind that, that number will be different depending on your specific iphone model all right so now what's new here in ios 16.0.3 and the first thing is that we have a fix for the mail bug where the mail application would crash on launch after receiving a malformed email and not only would it crash on launch but this bug would also lock you out of your mail application for good until you deleted that email on another device. So I talked about this in a previous Apple Weekly episode. This bug was referred to as Mailjack, and basically it would be an email with a maliciously crafted from field. You know, when you get an email and it shows from, that's where it was maliciously crafted and it would cause mail to crash. And basically you would not be able to reopen it until you logged on to that email account on another device and then deleted that email. So that has been fixed here with 16.0.3. This update also fixes the CarPlay bug related to the mic sensitivity. So a lot of users complained that no matter how loud they talked, the person on the other end of the phone call would not be able to hear them very well, no matter how much they turned up their volume or how loud you talked. So that was a bug. And Apple says here, low microphone volume can occur during CarPlay phone calls on iPhone 14 models. So they only mention iPhone 14 models, which is interesting because I saw a lot of users report that this bug bug was occurring on the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 13 series as well. So I would assume it's fixed for them as well, but it was just pretty interesting to see Apple only mention the 14 here. We also have a fix for the camera bug that I mentioned in previous videos. So the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max were the ones affected, but basically this bug was just where the camera would launch very slow. It would just be a black screen for like five to 10 seconds, and then it would show the viewfinder right here. So that has been fixed along with the switching between modes is no longer laggy either. It should perform as expected and not take too long to switch between your modes. And then here's another very critical fix for iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max users. So incoming call and app notifications may be delayed or not delivered on iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max. So luckily I have not faced this. I've had lots of cellular issues, but I never had delayed incoming calls or just not getting any notifications at all about a missed call. I would be very annoyed by that. So luckily I did not have that, but if you did, that has been fixed here with 16.0.3 and that alone is a big reason to update. And then as far as the display flickering, I know a lot of users had issues with their display flickering, especially in low light. So Apple has not mentioned that as a fix in this update, but hopefully that will be fixed with this update or the next one, which will be iOS 16.1. And we'll talk more about that here in a little bit. So also we do not have any mention of cell connectivity issues. So I've had really bad cell connectivity on my 14 Pro, which is running on iOS 16.1 beta right now, actually, but it was really bad on 16. 16.0.2 as well. So no mention of cell connectivity being fixed, but we do have a modem firmware update. So we could see better cell connectivity on this update here. And then for you Apple Watch users, watchOS 9.0.2 was also released today alongside iOS 16.0.3. So if we go to our software right here, you can see that we do have watchOS 9.0.2. And in this update, we have a fix for interruptions to streaming audio on Spotify. Snooze alarm notifications continue after the alarm is deleted for assistive touch users. So a nice accessibility fix there incomplete syncing of wallet and fitness data for newly paired Apple Watch. That happened to me with my Apple Watch Ultra, so I'm glad to see that has been fixed 
for users who are just getting a new Apple Watch, and then audio from microphone interrupted for some Apple Watch Series 8 and Ultra users. So I never had that issue, but that has also been addressed here with this new update. So if you have an Apple Watch, make sure to go ahead and update to watchOS 9.0.2. Now moving back to iOS 16.0.3, let's talk about the performance, the battery life, and if you should update. So first off, performance, you know, you might notice a minor bump in performance, especially if you had some of the bugs that I mentioned earlier, but overall raw performance is most likely not going to see any improvements here over 16 or 16.0.2. I think those performance improvements will come with iOS 16.1 if anything, but you can see here, we did just run a Geekbench test and we scored a 1740 on the single core and a 4657 on the multi-core, so not bad. And then battery life so far seems okay, but it does not seem any better than 16 or 16.0.2 to me. And I would not expect any improvement to battery life in this update either. I think that's most likely to come with iOS 16.1 as well, just like the performance that I mentioned a few minutes ago. So, you know, battery life is not as good as iOS 15 yet, but that's the usual case. It usually takes a few versions, a few big point versions until we get to as good a battery battery life as like say a 15.5 or 15.6 you know one of the later versions of iOS 15 so it's probably going to be a while until our battery life is on par with those late iOS 15 versions so now let's answer the question should you update to iOS 16.0.3 and I say that if you have an iPhone 14 series Absolutely. This fixes several bugs that affect your daily usage, like things you use on a daily basis, like the laggy camera, you know, switching back and forth between modes. It's annoying if you're trying to take a video and it takes a while. It's laggy like that. So this update fixes that. We have the fix for the delayed incoming calls or just not getting notifications of maybe say a missed call, just things like that. A lot of bugs that were only affecting the iPhone 14 series, especially the Pro and Pro Max, those have been fixed. So I say it's a no brainer for you guys to update. Now, if you have any other iPhone, I think it's fine to update, but not a must if you were not facing any of the bugs that I mentioned throughout this video. So again, keep in mind, iOS 16.1 is coming up soon. So if you are having a good experience on say iOS 16 or 16.0.2 and you don't want to risk losing that good experience, just wait for iOS 16.1. And of course, keep it locked to the channel because I will have all the details for that software in the coming weeks. And then finally, let's talk about when we can expect to see the iOS 16.1 update. So like I mentioned, we should expect that in the coming weeks. So I think that we could see iOS 16.1, the final release on the week of the 24th at the earliest, or we could see it on the week of the 31st. So I don't think we're going to have another double point update. I think we're going to go from 16.0.3 straight to 16.1. Now, along with the iOS 16.1 update, keep in mind, we are still expecting to see iPadOS 16.1 and macOS Ventura get released as well. So we could see some new Apple products later this month as well, but that's what to expect as far as software goes. But there you have it. That is iOS 16.0.3 and also some updates on watchOS 9.0.2, both pretty solid bug fix updates that are recommended, but not necessarily a must. So as always, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also make sure to subscribe for a lot more iOS update coverage. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Thank you.